You're listening to Tarazi Tuesdays with the Bible as Literature. Hi, this is Father Mark Bulos, and you are listening to Tarazi Tuesdays with the Bible as Literature podcast. In today's program, Father Paul reminds us of the Bible's painful and relentless campaign against the human ego. I am happy to introduce Father Paul on the Bible as Literature podcast, Tarazi Tuesdays. Can you be happy if your ego is being canceled? I'll let you think about that one. Interesting that the last verse of this chapter ends by a reference in the original to Shechem, which is the name of the main religious center in the kingdom of the north, kingdom of Israel, Manasseh, Ephraim. But the English translates it according to the meaning, which is a mountain slope. Now, Shechem is on a hill, a mountain slope, and thus it's uh, the shoulder, if you like, geographical shoulder. On, But what is important in keeping the original is that you hear the connection. And this brings me to remind you, as I keep stressing time and again, that the book of Genesis is so essential and it was written at the end. It has all, not all uh, to the last word, but most the, or the majority of the major vocabulary of the scriptures. And that is, according to me, very important. And notice the Hebrew. One mountain slope, which I took from the hand of the Amorites with my sword and with my bow. You assume that it's any mountain slope. But the hearer of the original knows that it is Shechem. Something special. Okay, with this... We move to chapter 49, which is the preparation for the end of the book. And this chapter is known as being the blessing of Jacob. You know how the grandfather would say to his children their fate in history. It's a classical literary device. There is no need for me to go in detail. I mean, you can read it, you can read commentaries and so on. It describes the function of each one. Now, I would like to linger a little bit on Joseph because he's important. Joseph, in verse 22, is a fruitful bow. A fruitful bow by a spring, his branches run over the wall. The archers fiercely attacked him, shot at him, and harassed him sorely. Yet his bow remained unmoved. His arms were made agile by the hands of the mighty one, the Abir. This is a word that is used in the Psalms the Abir of Jacob, the mighty one of Jacob. And you have it in Isaiah 1, 49 and 60. But then, interestingly, next to it, by the name of the shepherd, the rock of Israel. Now, it is impressive that the Mighty One is paralleled with Shepherd, which brings to mind that famous psalm to which I keep referring, 80, where it is the Lord as Shepherd who is seated at the throne of the Cherubim. It is impressive. 
But theology makes out of it that God is a pure spirit, is not a shepherd, but he appeared here and there in the Bible as shepherd. That's not what Psalms 80 is saying. It is the shepherd, as shepherd, that is seated on the throne of the cherubim. Now in Genesis 3 you have the same thing, that the Lord God that looked for Adam while hit halek, moving back and forth as a shepherd moves, that ended up by ordering a cherub to stand at the gate of Eden. Friends, scripture is scripture. It's an it that is closed for the ages. And forget about all these theories of scholarship. It started with two verses and came one added and then the scribe added a third verse and then the student uh, and the writer of the book of Jeremiah is Baruch, his student. Are you kidding me? Both Jeremiah and Baruch are characters in the book of Jeremiah. You cannot prove that there was a Jeremiah who has a student by the name of Baruch. You just cannot. Period. And that's why you hear scripture and you remember that the mighty one here, and notice the translation, Aben is translated as rock. That's very dangerous because Aben means a stone which is a pebble which supports the peg of a tent and not necessarily a mighty rock in the mountain. Because if Aben has the meaning only of rock, this means that when Israel passed the river and Joshua asked them, to collect some stones and so on, they went and had half a mountain. And so it doesn't work like that. So the translation, let me again check the original to show you that it's very difficult in the translations to keep that because it doesn't fit with the mighty one. Do you follow what I'm saying? The mighty you need next to it a rock that reflects this might. Okay? 24, let me go to my translations. No, the German is very interesting. It has Stein, which is a stone. Let me see the Greek. Catechesis, again, someone powerful, it doesn't reflect the uh, Latin. Latin has also a stone, lapis, Israel. Very interesting. Okay, so some translations. Okay, the French has also Pierre. Okay, then I stand corrected. But the English is not good because it has rock that has a different connotation and you have other words in English here in Arabic which uses the English uh, it's a translation again it goes for sahr which rock but I like to go back to the original and see how this combination because rock is already civilized, wall of a city, of a fortress, in the mountain. No, the pebble, the stone, is still reflective of something much smaller. By the God who will help you, by God Almighty, okay, Shaddaim, by the way, I mean, which is usually translated as Almighty. You have the verb Shadda in Arabic, which means uh, to pull, to be strong, and so on. But technically, Shaddaim is the dual of breasts, the God that feeds you. Okay, very important. I don't want to go on an aside here because I'm afraid that 
my hearers would perceive me theologically, so God is our mother, the motherly God of Scripture. But then the word mother means what the postmodern understand by mother. That's not what the text is saying. He's speaking about the feeding. Not all mothers feed. It's those who feed who are the mothers. Notice always the tension, even in the movies, between my genetic mother and my true mother. A true mother is the one that rears you, that feeds you, takes care of you. Okay? Let me move the blessing of your father. This is about the everlasting hills and so on. I don't want to go over that. This is Joseph. But let's move to Benjamin, a ravenous wolf. Notice Benjamin the warrior. And we're going to be stuck with that in the book of Judges at the end. Okay. Then he charged them and said to them, verse 29, I am gathered to my people, bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephraim the Hittite. Fantastic that ending. Ephraim the Hittite starts in 23 and never disappears until the end 32. The field and the cave that is in it were purchased from the Hittites. Unbelievable. To the east of Mamre, the land of Canaan that Abraham bought. That's so powerful. That ultimately Israel is gathered together as a family among the nations. So the ending of 48, where we heard fullness of nations, is revisited at the end of chapter 49. And all this you're not going to find in books of theology. No way. Theology always stresses uh, the specialdom of we or us or I or me. It cannot be otherwise. Okay. Notice how Europe, 20 years ago, when it became afraid of so many refugees from Syria, Iraq, and Af Afghanistan coming, you know, you had a lot of people, including, including the Russians. And uh, I heard with my own ears at a conference in Australia, paper presented by Hilarion Alfeyev, the bishop whose books have been translated into English, published by SBS Press. And who is the head of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Church of Russia? And he said, we need to preserve the Christian civilization of Europe. He was not at ease to have a few Muslims ending up in Europe. Now the proof that it had nothing to do with economy is the fact that most Europe is accepting readily the Ukrainian refugees. Okay friends, let's settle for that because I have, I don't have any even energy to talk to self-righteous Northern Europeans and Northern Americans, and by the same token, all human beings, because Arabs are no better. The main thing is that scripture is anti-ego. Let me repeat. 
if you don't learn from the land mammals and better from the fish you have no hope because you can think that with erecting your city and your tower whose head reaches the heaven you are safe and this is exactly where all Bnei Adam, Ha Adam, all humanity, all the human race wanted to do. The Bible as Literature is a production of the Ephesus School Network.